Hi guys. All right, it is another gray, gloomy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Today on this gloomy, depressing, it would be Wednesday, January 13th, 2021, as we enter the final week of the Trumpocene. The Trumpo scene, and uh, you know, yesterday, uh, this is Sam Mitchell, and this is Collapse Chronicle. So yesterday, I was actually uh, sending out serious kudos to the mainstream media, as I actually, what was it? Like yet in yesterday's mainstream media, there were like six articles, you know, six intelligent articles talking about the collapse of a planet. I, I was absolutely flabbergasted, so uh, I was not that surprised today when I opened up Yahoo News to, you know, to go through the Rolodex of the hundred or so top headlines on planet Earth and not one mention of the, uh, of the collapse of a planet. You know, between the distraction to the distraction and the distraction itself uh, between the two you know layers of distraction to keep our minds off the single biggest story in the history of humanity which is the collapse of a planet i guess there was no room left over uh, anywhere according to the uh, editors of yahoo news to even whisper the fact that this planet is collapsing all around us, that civilization is crumbling, that uh, the planet itself is going to hell in a handbasket. Uh, but don't worry, just because the Yahoo News editors are completely, uh, completely in the dark about the single biggest story in the history of humanity, I have several Alert Tribes members uh, sending me this article from the good old Guardian. So, of course, you know, Yahoo News runs the Guardian pretty often. Uh, there's usually a Guardian story every couple of days, but apparently the editors of Yahoo News, <clears throat> and you better believe they saw this story, uh, looked at this story and decided, nah, nobody cares. <clears throat> All right, so the Guardian will have to talk, tell us about this for the two or three people on the planet who disagree with Yahoo News. Quote, <clears throat> top scientists warn of ghastly future of mass extinction and climate disruption. A sobering new report says the world is failing to grasp the extent of threats posed by biodiversity loss and the climate crisis. And I am going to try to remember to put a link to this uh, article, which has links to probably, good Lord, um, at least a dozen more articles and scientific reports uh, but if you just want to sit around and listen to me read it for you, I have nothing else to do with my day. This is the one thing I have to do out of this 24-hour uh, slice of hell uh, is read this article to you. So uh, take it away, Guardian, and explain this to us. The planet, that is planet Earth they're talking about, that planet you know, the blue planet. The blue planet is facing a, quote, ghastly future of mass extinction, declining health, and climate disruption upheavals, close quote, that threaten human survival because of ignorance and inaction. According to an international group of scientists who warn people who warn that people still have not grasped the urgency of the biodiversity and 
climate crises. <clears throat> the 17 experts, including the godfather of doom and gloom himself, uh, Professor Paul Ehrlich from Stanford University, <clears throat> and scientists from Mexico, Australia, and the U.S. say our planet is in a much worse state than most people, even scientists, understood or understand. So, uh, this is a report. You can find the full report by going on this link to where it's uh, published in Frontiers in Conservation Science for the full wording. Uh, this is what the Guardian tweezed out of it. <clears throat> Quote, the scale of the threats to the biosphere and all of its life forms, including humanity, is in fact so great that it is difficult to grasp for even well-informed experts. Uh, they write in the report, which references more than 150 studies detailing the world's major environmental challenges. Yes, the world's major environmental challenges. Uh, they only came up with 150. <clears throat> the delay between destruction of the natural world and the impacts of these actions means people do not recognize how vast the problem is, the paper argues, quote, the mainstream, the mainstream, and they're not just talking, I don't think here, clueless, you know, just mainstream, day-to-day -day clueless morons, you know, like Trump tards, for instance, uh, or anybody who can name more than one song in Billboard's Top 20, uh, you know, the mainstream. They're talking the normies, but I think they're talking about even mainstream environmentalists are completely clueless. Anybody who has any hope that we're going to turn this around. Uh, you know, like, like Michael Mann would be probably lumped into the mainstream. It's these mainstream environmentalists uh, refusing to acknowledge how completely doomed we are. Anyway, quote, the mainstream is having difficulty grasping the magnitude of this loss, despite the steady erosion of the fabric of human civilization. Close quote. <coughs> the report warns that climate-induced mass migrations, more pandemics, and conflicts over resources will be inevitable will be inevitable unless, unless urgent action is taken. And this is where, you know, th this is where the true doomer even breaks apart from Paul Ehrlich and these guys. Uh, I, I refuse to believe that Paul Ehrlich uh, thinks for one minute that we can turn this freight train around. Uh, the, uh, all of this crap about unless urgent action is taken. There, there's two problems with this, uh, th this tired cliche uh, about unless urgent action is taken. Number one is that urgent action is not going to be taken. There is exactly zero evidence that the urgent action that needs to be taken, you know, which is, as Paul Ehrlich would probably say underneath his breath, uh, is the sterilization of the human race. Uh, since, n number one, there is no way in hell 
that anybody from us individual clueless moron consumers right on up through the UN are going to take anything approaching the urgent action needed to save this planet at this point. That That's the first thing. And then, of course... Uh, what can they do at this point? They can pull all of the little techno-utopian rabbits out of their hat, and and, 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 and it's too late. Uh, there is no urgent action that can be taken. Uh, it, it, it can't be taken, and it won't be taken. And since you lose the second part of that sentence... Uh, you just have to, you know, all of this will be inevitable. It is inevitable. As I'm watching this, I am watching this flock of these, uh, these beautiful little white ibises. You can't see them here. We have a whole flock of these white ibises. Oh, there they go flying off. I don't know what scared the... Oh, they found something exciting. So, while I'm having this rant about the collapse of a planet, I'm watching a beautiful flock of white ibis. Anyway, where... Uh... Okay. And this is already, even this report, bringing out this hopium-soaked BS quote. Ours is not a call to surrender. We aim to provide leaders with a realistic cold shower of the state of the planet that is essential for planning to avoid a ghastly future. The report says, oh yes, yes. Dealing with the enormity of the problem requires... And this is why it ain't gonna happen, as Paul Ehrlich knows. Dealing with the enormity of the problem requires far-reaching changes to global capitalism, education, and equality, the paper says. These include abolishing the idea of perpetual economic growth, you know, the idea that's drilled into our heads from cradle to grave by every single politician, corporate ad man. Uh, it is the number one message drilled into our brains uh, during our entire life. You know, that idea. We need to abolish the number one idea being drilled into our brains since the day we were born, properly pricing environmental externalities, yes, you know, like $25 a gallon gasoline, stopping, stopping the use of fossil fuels. I was just mentioning in my roundup yesterday now, what is it? 1,400 oil, new oil and gas drilling permits uh, have been awarded on our federal public lands here in the U.S. alone in the last three months. 1,400 new drilling permits have been handed over. Uh, to the fossil fuel companies in the last three months. This is how we are stopping the use of fossil fuels. Reining in corporate lobbying, yes, and do not forget empowering women. They always like that one, uh, the empowering women. Uh, like giving them the power to uh, cross their knees. The, re the report comes months after the world failed to meet one single United Nations biodiversity target. Yes, that as I reported on, what were there, 20 or 30 uh, biological diversity targets that the UN uh, set up in 2010 
to uh, save the planet by 2020, every single one of them failed. It was a total, complete failure. Yes. The, the targets were created to stem the destruction of the natural world. Yes. Uh, and it was the second consecutive time governments have failed to meet their 10-year biodiversity goals. And this year, a coalition of about one-fourth of the countries on the planet pledged to protect almost a third of the planet by 2030. I went over that. That was one of the stories yesterday, uh, you know, where even Greta Thunberg was uh, having a sick, twisted, ironic laugh uh, as Greta Thunberg uh, was reporting ab about this absolutely insulting slap in the face to this planet that the, the, what happened yesterday is, is pretty much ironclad proof uh, what did little St. Greta say yesterday? It, it, guaranteeing uh, decades of further destruction of this planet. That's what they're talking about in that sentence. Okay, as if you did not realize this already, an estimated one million species of our fellow earthlings are now at risk of extinction. Many within decades, many within the next few minutes, according to one recent UN report, and they have links to all of these. So what does uh, the good Dr. Ehrlich have to say about this? Quote, environmental deterioration is infinitely more threatening to civilization than Trumpism or the corona panic. Ehrlich told the Guardian, yes. Um, <clears throat> now you can find my interview. I, I've interviewed Paul a couple of times here. On, we need to get Paul back on the show maybe. And I, I he and I touched on this uh, during uh, my interview with him. In the Population Bomb, published in 1968, Ehrlich warned of imminent population explosion and hundreds of millions of people starving to death. Although he has acknowledged some timings were wrong, he has said he stands by its fundamental message that population growth and high levels of consumption by wealthy nations is driving destruction. Quoting uh, Dr. Ehrlich, growth mania, they make that a one word, growth mania is the fatal disease of civilization. It must be replaced by campaigns that make equity and well-being society's goals not consuming more junk. Large populations and their continued growth drive soil degradation and biodiversity loss, the new paper warns. Quote, more people means that more synthetic compounds and dangerous throwaway plastics are manufactured, many of which add to the growing toxification of the earth. It also increases the chances of pandemics that fuel ever more desperate hunts for scarce resources, close quote. The effects of the climate emergency are more evident than biodiversity loss. Now, I have no idea what that sentence means. Uh, I'm sure, Book Hermit, would you like to weigh in on that sentence? The effects of the climate emergency are more evident than biodiversity loss. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm just reading this. Uh, but still, but still, society is failing to cut emissions 
you know, except when uh, the entire planet is put on a uh, lockdown. Uh, if people understood the magnitude of the crises, changes in politics and policies could match the gravity of the threat. I, I don't know how Paul Ehrlich could uh, sign his name to such a patently absurd statement. I'm thinking Michael Mann must be the lead author of this. Yes. Okay, but let's listen. We're going to move over from Paul. This is Professor Daniel Blumstein from the university, from UCLA. One of the authors said, quote, our main point is that once you realize the scale and imminence of the problem, it becomes clear that we need much more than individual actions like using less plastic, eating less meat, or flying less. Our point is that we need big systemic changes and fast the paper cites a number of key reports published in the past few years, including, uh, I love this one, from the World Economic Forum. You, you know, the World Economic Forum, one of the biggest gatherings of planet eaters uh, this side of the United Nations, reported last year uh, named Biodiversity Loss you know, which the World Economic Forum is responsible for more biodiversity loss than any other group on the planet as one of the top threats to the global economy. Let's see, don't forget this uh, global assessment report, uh, which said 70% of the planet has been altered by humans. I've covered that one in former rants. Of course, last year's World Wildlife Fund Living Planet Report, which obviously is the Dying Planet Report, which warned the average population size of vertebrates has declined by 68%. 68% since 1970. And of course, that famous 2018 IPCC report, which said that humanity had already exceeded global warming of 1C above pre-industrial levels and is set to reach 1.5C between 2030 and 2052. But of course, on many areas of the planet, it shot past 1.5C years ago. The new report follows years of stark warnings about the state of our planet from the world's leading scientists, including a statement by 11,000 scientists last year that people will face, quote, untold suffering due to the climate crisis, close quote, unless major changes are made. There's that, you know, that little unless clause that we talked about already. It's time to let the unless clause go, guys. Uh, in 2016, more than 150 of Australia's climate scientists wrote an open letter to then Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull demanding immediate action on reducing emissions. And then three years after that letter uh, was written, Australia went up in flames. Uh, and also in 2019, 375 scientists, including 30 Nobel Prize winners, wrote an open letter to the world about their frustrations over political inaction on climate change. And now you can add this latest report as one more report that uh, did not even make it into Yahoo News's 
top 100 stories on the planet today and uh, will it, it will never make it uh, out of the inbox uh, of, of, of anybody except uh, people already in the Dumasphere. This is just one more of these reports to end up on the trash heap. Professor Tom Oliver, an ecologist at the University of Reading who was not involved in the report, said it was a frightening but credible summary of the grave threats society faces. Um, a, a credible summary of the grave threats society faces under a business-as-usual scenario. Quote, scientists now need to go beyond simply documenting environmental decline and instead find the most, way, most effective ways to catalyze action. I'm not sure if uh, Professor Oliver has any action to catalyze in mind. Here is Professor Rob Brooker, head of ecological sciences at the James Hutton Institute, who also is not involved in this study, said it clearly emphasizes the pressing nature of the challenges, quote, we certainly should not be in any doubt about the huge scale of the challenges we are facing and the changes we will need to make to deal with them, close quote. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus. Guys, e e you know, I, I have no idea why I keep doing this. Uh, would someone please tell me why I keep sitting here day after day talking to myself uh, as the, just the mountain of evidence pouring in about how completely hopeless the situation is on this collapsing planet as uh, nowhere, not one mention in the mainstream media about one, I, you know, one aspect of any of this. No mention. As uh, the entire... Uh, media and world, I guess, is focused on uh, the distraction, to the distraction, but anyway, I'm going to wrap up talking to myself and uh, go back to pacing like a tiger in my cage and taking the little dog on a walk before it starts raining. Get out there and pace in your own cage while you still can. Bye, guys.